Hello, the purpose of this video is to explain recent changes to the way water systems submit chlorine residual data and chlorinator operational reports to the Division of Drinking Water. In the past, these were submitted separately, but these changes will allow water systems to submit both at once and save time and effort in the process. Let's begin by quickly going over the regulations. First, R309-105 requires all water systems with chlorine in their distribution systems to check and record free chlorine residuals at least three times per week. Second, R309-210 requires systems with chlorine to measure and record the free chlorine residual with every routine bacteri bacteriological sample. Yes, the chlorine residuals taken with the bacteriological samples can be used to satisfy the three residuals per week requirement I just mentioned. Third, R309-210 also says that systems that operate chlorinators must complete and submit operational reports for each of their active chlorinators. We have a separate video all about those operational reports, so we encourage you to watch that video to learn more. Continuing with regulatory requirements, both the chlorine residual data and the operational reports are completed monthly and are submitted quarterly. These items must be submitted to DDW by no later than the 10th day after the end of the quarter. Please be aware that surface water treatment systems and systems that are groundwater required to disinfect to primary standards submit their reports monthly and not quarterly. We think it's important to explain why we are making these changes, and the main driver of this change is to simplify the process in order to save water systems time and effort. Previously, the residuals and operational reports were submitted separately. Systems would submit residuals through an online form and submit operational reports in an email. Now these two items can be submitted in one step through the updated online form. Let's move on and explain the changes to the online form. We'll do this by comparing and contrasting the old form and the new form. The old form began by asking for an email address and the water system number. The new form begins by asking for a name, email, and the water system information. Individuals completing this form will start typing the system's number or the system's name under the water system number and name box, and then select the water system from the options that appear. If you are trying to complete this form but your water system is not coming up, please let us know with a phone call or email and we will get that fixed. To enter residuals on the old form, users would first select the reporting year and then select the reporting quarter before hitting the next bot button on the bottom of the page. The users then enter the chlorine residual data for each month of the quarter on the next page. The form asks for the number of chlorine residuals taken during the month and the average residual level for the entire month. Entering residuals on the new form is nearly identical. The same questions are asked in the same way. The only real difference is the formatting. Now let's talk about an addition to the new form. After entering the chlorine residual data, users will begin, begin the chlorinator report section. Users must first answer whether they operate any chlorinators or if they only receive chlorinated water from another system. Systems that do not operate any chlorinators will answer accordingly and then be moved on to the next section of the form. For systems that do operate their own chlorinators, a question has been added asking if the user needs help with chlorinator reports. Please answer yes if you have questions about these reports and we will follow up and provide assistance. We recognize that some operators may be unfamiliar with these reports, so do not hesitate to answer yes to this question and get help. Users can then upload their reports to the form. The form can accept multiple file types, so a simple photo, an Excel document, or a scan of, or a scan of the reports are all accepted. Some larger systems operate many chlorinators. Those systems may submit their large number of reports using an alternative method like email. If you work for a large system and have questions about that, please contact the division. Now going back to the old form. The old form asked for a name and email and had the user check a box that they certify the information they are submitting is accurate. The new form also has a user check a box to certify the information provided is accurate. After that, the user will provide their signature or initials before hitting the submit form button. So that covers the changes 
to how water systems submit chlorine residual data and chlorinator operational reports to the Division of Drinking Water. Again, if you need help with chlorinator reports, please answer accordingly on the form and we will reach out to you and provide assistance. We encourage you to visit our mrdl.utah.gov webpage to learn more.